How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for hematology for step one, internal medicine for 2CK. No excuses. Okay, we're going to cut to the chase. So before you get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. Six-year-old girl. She's got a recurrent urinary tract infection since birth. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin is low at nine grams per deciliter. Should be 13 to 17.5 in non-menstruating females and males. 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. MCV is low at 75, should be 80 to 100. Leukocytes normal, 5,200, should be 4 to 11,000. Lymphocytes are normal at 30%, should be 25 to 33%. Platelets normal, 210,000, should be 150 to 450,000. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for the findings. Let's just hop to the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, pyruvate kinase deficiency, wrong fucking answer. You just, it's extremely low yield. Okay, it's shown up. It, it has, but it's low yield. You need to know this is the second most common cause of hemoly hemolytic anemia secondary to an enzyme deficiency deficiency behind G6PD deficiency being most common. Pyruvate kinase, it's the last enzyme in glycolysis. You need it for ATP production. So if there's decreased ATP production within the RBC, you're going to have decreased sodium potassium ATPase activity, which can lead to decreased sodium efflux from the RBC. Water stays with sodium. There's swelling of the RBC and increased lysis. Okay. You can see echinocytes, which are a weird type of RBC. They're slightly spiky, but they're not as spiny as compared to acanthocytes, which are uh, liver failure as well as a beta proteinemia. The point is, pyruvate kinase deficiency, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, iron deficiency, wrong answer, okay? Now you say, well, wait a second, there's a microcytic anemia here. There's no other information. Like, I mean, why isn't this necessary? Like, why can't this be right? It's because we have the recurrent urinary tract infection since birth. And I'll explain this in a moment. Uh, if they want iron deficiency in pediatrics, uh, they might show you a smear with pale RBCs. They could give you a two-year-old. Okay, this is high yield, okay? You need to know that uh, a child age two or younger who's consuming greater than 24 ounces of cow's milk daily is, pr is prone to iron deficiency anemia, okay? They'll work that into pediatric vignettes sometimes. Sounds factoidy and obscure, uh, but occasionally you'll get an IDA question and I'll just, I'll, I'll be looking for it. I'm like, boom, there it is. They mentioned the kids drinking a lot of milk, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, wrong answer. Instantaneously, you know it's wrong because it's X-linked recessive. This would only be boys. Okay, yes, we get Heinz bodies, bite cells. Uh, G6PD is necessary for producing NADPH, and that uh, protects RBCs from oxidative stress and hemolysis. So this will be the answer when they give you, e.g., a 12-year-old boy who's had a recent viral infection or received a drug such as Dapsone and now has jaundice, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. anemia. That's just G6PD deficiency. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, cytokine-mediated EPO deficiency is the correct answer. This is anemia of chronic disease. Okay, so in pediatrics, when a kid has recurrent urinary tract infections, the deduction that needs to be made is that there could be chronic pyelonephritis. They love this. Okay, they can give you a two-year-old boy who has posterior urethral valves and recurrent UTIs, and you need to know that can lead to pyelonephritis, chronic pyelonephritis, scarring of the kidney. And renal insufficiency is a high yield etiology for anemia of chronic disease. Now, it's because damaged renal cells can lead to cytokine release. Uh, cytokines cause the liver to increase production of hepcidin, which is a molecule that can prevent iron release from phagocytes. So the result is we can get normal or slightly increased iron stores. So normal or slightly increased ferritin, but serum iron is low. Okay, so if they gave you the labs and you see ferritin normal, serum iron low, and especially in the setting of renal failure, that'd be anemia of chronic disease. Okay, etiology is apart from this. Could be hep hepatitis B and C, uh, and rheumatoid arthritis, sarcoidosis, autoimmune disease, and eosinophilia. Those are favorites. Now, the elephant in the room is that some students will say, "But wait a second, MCV is low. I thought in anemia of chronic disease, your MCV had to be normal." It's not fucking true. Okay, and this is a point of exasperation, especially as a tutor on my end that I observe with students. Because students will be so fucking quick to eliminate anemia of chronic disease and say, oh, it can't be because uh, MCV is low. You're going to see loads of questions on the pediatric forms in particular for 2CK 
where they'll give you EG, a JRA, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and it'll be a name of chronic disease, and then the MCV will be 72. And the student's like, oh, it can't be. Wrong fucking answer. Okay, you need to know MCV absolutely can be low in any of chronic disease. Absolutely. So normocytic or microcytic. And we can treat any of chronic disease due to renal failure with EPO. We don't give EPO for the other etiologies. So if it's rheumatoid arthritis causing it, then we're just going to treat the underlying condition, treat, treat the rheumatoid arthritis. We do not give EPO. Quickly hop through the last one here, acute lymphocytic leukemia, wrong answer. Of course, this is the most common leukemia in pediatrics. They'll just give you a four-year-old who's got a super elevated leukocyte count greater than 20 to 40,000, and it'll be all lymphocytes, like 80 to 90% lymphocytes. Okay, it's that simple. And you just, the, the high yield point is to not confu confuse it with pertussis. Okay, so for whatever fucking reason, whooping cough can present with a super elevated leukocyte count, 30 to 40,000 plus, where it's all lymphocytes. Okay, and students will often uh, think it's ALL, but it's not. Okay, so that's an important caveat to be communicated. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel and appreciate your time. That's it.